Howdy. My name is James Rood. I'm a current master's student here at a and I got my undergrad in accounting and I'm getting a master's in financial management and I'm taking my CPA exams right now at the same time. And so over the last eight, nine months, I've developed an interest and passion for Bitcoin. And so this has really fueled me to try to learn as much as I can about the field and different things that happen within it. And so one of the things today I'll be talking about is a server one start nine tutorial slash demo. And so if you're unfamiliar with this, it's basically a home server that you can hook up and you protect your own data and you house it at your, at your house. And so I have a little, here's the actual server. And so it's, it's very plain. It comes with just the power and an ethernet cable that you plug into it and that's all the setup that's required. It's very easy and it comes with all of it and it comes in a nice little box with some instructions as well. And so <clears throat> with that said, I'll get into the tutorial. And so if you're not familiar with Start9, they are a sovereign computing company in which their main focus is being able to take control of your data. And so they have a little video on their website kind of explaining their business thesis and why they think they're important. And the biggest thing about that is privacy. With one of these Start OS servers, you are able to control and protect your own data from within your own household, making you less of a threat to external hackers or any other malicious group that may target large data centers as we've been seeing in the last few years the cybersecurity attacks are increasing and storing your data at home will give you peace of mind as well as make you safer from those threats of losing important things such as bitcoin information and if you're familiar with bitcoin you know that privacy is the fundamental pillar of Bitcoin, you know, being able to own your own coin and have control of it without anyone knowing who owns who or who owns what and any of the other information that could be leaked. And so whenever you get your start OS server, you're going to plug it in and you will connect to it on the internet that you're currently on and you'll get this screen about trusting your root. And so they actually have really good instructions. It's just a few steps. I'm not gonna do it on this laptop. I'm just showing you what the screen would look like when you initially set it up. And so rather, I am sharing my screen from my computer that I did set up the server on. And so this is what it looks like. And you can also connect to this remotely, which I'll show later in the video using a Tor browser. But just for now, I'm just going to show what I have downloaded on my personal computer. And so, as you see, most of the things I have are related to Bitcoin or different things that interact with it, like the Lightning or the Mempool. But one of the cool things that the Start OS server has and offers is this marketplace of apps. And so as you can see, there's a pretty good amount of diversity between the apps and what you can use it for, right? They are still expanding this software as it's a open source and continually getting updated. And that's one of the things that I think Start OS is doing correctly, you know, getting feedback from their community and from outside people about how to improve their system and security. And so there are a lot of apps, as you can see, whenever you click all, and they offer a wide variety of things, whether that's from data storage to Bitcoin to improving communications. And so this is where I think the server has a really cool value that you can create. And so as in Bitcoin, it's a consensus network, meaning that people around the world will download the Bitcoin core and run their computer as a node and these nodes are what creates the consensus network within bitcoin giving it that security and eliminating the centralization that typical financial services or other companies have and so this server can actually run as its own node as i'm running the bitcoin core currently and 
whenever I show the mempool, which is just showing all of the transactions and blocks occurring on the core, you can see it updates live time, right? These yellow blocks are blocks that are going through the process of getting on the blockchain. These are verified blocks, and as you can see, they're sequentially numbered. And this just updates constantly 24 seven as people and miners are doing transactions and then signing and verifying them as well. And so this is kind of cool because you can go down and you can look at latest blocks and you can see which block pools are actually mining some of these blocks. And as you can see, the Foundry USA has quite a few. And what they do is they're a mempool worth of a bunch of different nodes that all work together to create this giant mempool that can get transactions processed. And if you're unfamiliar with mining, the incentive behind mining is that whenever miners get a block approved, so whenever one of these will go through, the person who is able to mine it will get a reward. And that reward's currently sixth and an eighth of six and an eighth Bitcoin. And every four years there's about there's a halving within Bitcoin which cuts the uh, reward in half. And that halving's actually coming up in April later of this year. And so it'll be kind of exciting to see how Bitcoin reacts and what happens after that. But this is one of the cool features that I think this server if you're interested in Bitcoin has to offer. And so another thing that is also very cool is you can also interact with the lightning, which is a layer two process on this, on the core. And so what lightning does is it allows transactions with maybe less fees to get processed quicker and added into the block as like kind of this block transaction. And so this is more appealing to the retail user of Bitcoin because, you know, the large transactions with large transaction fees are the ones miners typically want to go after when selecting transactions for their block. And so the lightning kind of helps deal with that process of people not wanting to pay you super high transaction fees and can help eliminate the time it takes for a transaction to go through. And the start OS actually allows you to have your own lightning node and you can connect it to your own Bitcoin wallet, Lightning wallet, and interact with it seamlessly from here. I just downloaded the interface and made a little thing for it, but I haven't actually connected a wallet or anything. It's only advised if you really know what you're doing to do this because Bitcoin transactions are non-refundable. If you accidentally type in a wrong key or send it to the wrong person, that money's gone and you'll never get it back. And so that is one of the downsides to Bitcoin, but things like the Start OS server will allow people to interact and do transactions on their own without a centralized platform like Coinbase. And this will kind of help people take control of their data and privacy and kind of fulfill that mission that Bitcoin's always wanted to do, which is provide personal finance to the individual using it without going through an institution. And so some of the other things that are really interesting on the start OS that you can elect to download as well are different interfaces. So sorry, I was getting the systems confused a little bit. So the robo stats is actually what you can use to convert your Bitcoin into other currencies. And this really helps minimize the amount of transactions that occurs when you're trying to convert, you know, say crypto into some fiat money or a different, different comp or country's currency than you. And so it will simplify the peer-to-peer -peer process as well as the experience and decrease the amount of transaction fees that you may lose along the way. Because when converting between different national currencies, there's always that fee for for converting the difference in the foreign exchange rate. And this really simplifies and gets rid of all that risk. Another really cool app that they have is this P2C pay server, 
which allows you to connect it to your point of sale system. And so if you're a small business owner that uses a POS system such as Square, this, this application on the Start OS will allow you to connect that app that you take payments for and allow cryptocurrency to then flow through it from the customer's wallet into your personal wallet or whatever wallet you designate. And so this is a really cool feature <clears throat> because it just allows Bitcoin to get further integrated into business and will improve the amount of transactions that are going through and just further kind of globalize this, globalize Bitcoin as an exchange for, for services and goods. And so these are just some of the really cool features that this start OS system has specifically towards Bitcoin and there's a variety of other ones. You know, I recommend if people are interested, you can download the OS actually and run it on your on a Raspberry Pi or your own computer and kind of play around and see what's there. And so this is where I think some of the the big value comes in with the start OS. You know, it allows you to really manage and host your own home server applications as well as store your own data. And so I'm doing this through a Start9 server, which you, with the hardware, if you were to buy it from them, it's very easy to update, very easy to run and install and keep track of. And this is one of the things that makes it very appealing to people that may not be as tech savvy or may not know their way around a Linux-based system as well. And so this is a really great app especially for Bitcoin, running as a Bitcoin node, furthering that consensus network, as well as allowing you to control your own wallets as, and view the mempool in a very user-friendly and nice way. And so as you can see, some of these blocks actually changed. We were, I think, on this number whenever I started the demo, and now it's down to here. So these blocks are current, always going through and I just kind of find it interesting. You can see the large transactions going through, updating all the time, the fees on those transactions as well. And so all of this is just kind of interesting to look at and digest if you're interested in learning more about Bitcoin. And so some of the advantages that this Start OS has is that it's a very easy user-friendly server. User-friendly server. So it does this, you know, it has a lot of interesting technology built into it that you can use it for, as well as having a simple setup. It only needs like an X, uh, x86 system to be run. So, you know, like I said, you can purchase a Raspberry Pi online and run, run the Start OS system on it. One of the, some of the disadvantages about this though is it is still a relatively new technology. There's still more companies starting to support it, but it's not quite grown to the same support you would say like a Google cloud server is or anything like that. And so there is, you know, some advantages and disadvantages with getting this system. And so some of the Another very cool feature that I liked about the Start OS is you can actually interact with it via the Tor. And so I'm going to show that now. So I have the Tor set up and whenever you set it up on your personalized computer, you'll be able to get this link at the top, which if you don't want to connect via the root on your system, you can actually email this link and as long as you have a Tor browser and are connected to the Tor, you can access this website from wherever, you know, making it super easy to just check, check in on your server or, you know, connect via your phone or laptop, wherever you are, as long as you have internet, you can connect to this as long as you have that link from your initial setup. And so, as you can see, everything looks the exact same on the Tor browser. It may be a little slower just due to my Wi-Fi versus Ethernet differences that I'm currently on. So I am 
Okay, yeah, sorry, that took much longer than I was expecting. But as you can kind of see, this is the exact same screen that I was just showing on my home computer. As you know, and you can see the transactions going through the different, the different ones. As you can see, there's a very large transaction that occurred uh, about, about five or four or five hours ago. And so, yeah, like I said, the Start OS is just a really cool system and server and has a really unique operating system. And with its open source kind of background, I believe that, you know, there's a lot of improvements to be made and there's improvements happening. And so if you, if you are interested, you can purchase a hardware device from Start OS, like the Server 9 that I have. And it comes in a little box. It's super easy. Just one plug for the power, one Ethernet cord to your Wi-Fi router, and that's it. And then you get on your computer, go through the setup process, which I can kind of show a little bit. So first you would download your root. They then have some instructions on how to set it up, which make it very easy to do. And like I said, this was super quick. It probably took me 15, 20 minutes to maybe get everything set up and running. And so with that being said, I, uh, this is my review of the Start OS system. You know, I talked about some of the advantages, some of the disadvantages, what it can be used for, what I currently use it for towards Bitcoin purposes, as well as the value that it adds, you know, protecting your own data, storing your server at home and not being in some honeypot cloud digital center, which could be prone to attacks in the future. And so with all of that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching my tutorial video. Feel free to connect with me at any of the socials I've provided below. Thanks again.